Uh, take a look at S187 and uh, Kate, why don't you walk us through this? I'm gonna, I'm gonna vote, we're gonna vote on this bill over the next couple of minutes uh, and we'll hold the vote open for anybody who's not here. But I don't sense there's any real issues with it. But just could you walk us through the changes we've sure. since it was introduced? Sure. Katie McLean, Office of Legislative Council. So what you have here is a list of exclusions to the chapter on residential rental agreements and you're adding a new item to the list, transient occup occupancy by an occupant placed in a hotel, motel, or lodgings in connection with health care treatment or recovery, where the occupancy is paid for by a hospital, an agency designated, uh, for a designation statute, so a DA, or a specialized service agency operating under an agreement entered into pursuant to statute, um, and regardless of whether the occupant is subject to the tax levy, the meals and rooms tax. So since the last time you've seen this language, the only change is on lines, the end of 20 and the beginning of 21. Um, you're substituting the word, uh, you previously had that, and now you're saying where the occupancy, right? Do, yeah. Do you remember that conversation yeah. and um, advocates brought that language? So where the occupancy is paid for instead of that is paid for. And other than that, this has not changed since the last time you've seen it. Um, okay. And we just wanted it to cover other entities than hospitals as tenants mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they could possibly have the same situation. Right. Or when. Yes. Uh, where or when? Yeah, no, it's, it's where the right word or should it read when? Um, Not that it matters as much. I have run up through the editors and they mm -hmm. gave it their stamp of approval, but if you prefer when, I, I you can make the change. Um, yeah, I, I hear the concern. Um, Mine, I don't think it probably makes much difference. Mm -hmm. What the house fix it. <laughs> okay, so um, do I have a motion to pass draft 3.1 S187? So moved. Second. Thank you. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Let's show we do this one? Sure. Take uh, this several people in the room that bring the history to life for you, too. Thank you. Yes. Okay, and we'll hold the roll call. Well, you know, we'll Rebecca's going to be here on the side. It's not a roll call or any other, so unless she wants to close it, we'll just say 401. Um, Okay, we're going to move on to 237, and there should be, I don't know if we've got, I know I emailed you the latest draft. It's uh, right, is 6.1 the latest? Yes. 237, 7.40 a.m.? Yes. Okay. And is Ellen here? No. Uh, I don't. But David was planning on being here, I so, thought. So was Ellen from 10 to 11, I think.
And one minor thing that we can talk about without it all. On the first page, if you look at it, uh, it looks kind of weird on line 19 and 20. This is to get more information into the facility. I just want to see whether the committee agrees or not. I read it and I asked the drafters whether it was duplicative or not. And then I realized that the reason why it's not duplicative is because they've used a hyphen, it seems. It's a weird hyphen, though. But I've never seen hyphens used in drafting like that. And it's uh, very strange. Where, where are you? Uh, 1920. Well, actually, 1920, yeah, it's, it, and 21. There's a. It's, it's basically, I think the way they're trying to write it is water supply, hyphen, lines, facilities, and service areas. So this is sewage disposal, lines, facilities, and service areas. So, um, but I think they should probably clean that up. I've never seen all of well, it may be cleaning it up because it's an underline under the comma, so they're trying to get rid of the semicolon actually and replace it with just simply a comma. It's very strange. Uh, yeah, that's, that's lining. Yeah, that's lining the period out in the semicolon and putting a comma in. Yeah, it's to me yeah. even worse than discussing shelves or bays. That's like at least those. Are some. Oh, it's water supply lines. Yeah. Water sewage disposal line facility and service area. Well, that would, so they should just get rid of everything between supply and lines, right? That would be okay, right? Well, let's that's have them explain that's it before what, we go. That's probably basically. what they're doing. Yeah. It's, it's not water supply, it. comma, yeah. lines, facilities, and services. No, I think it's water supply, lines, facilities, no comma. Uh -huh. I think they're getting rid of the comma. Except that the underline is over the comma, which is puzzling. I've never seen that. Be. I think they're getting rid of the comma. Okay. And what's the previous version look like? No, no, that's, that's the way it's always been. Any early sense from the Natural Resources Committee on? They're yeah, meeting on an 11. Good. Okay. Great. Senator, you're speaking. All right. It kind of jumps. Yeah, I've got it. I've got it. Um, she's, she's going to be at 1015, because that's actually what it's scheduled for. She said she has to finish one little thing. She's been here three minutes. Okay. Do you want David here also, or are we going to start with that? Sure, we can start with that one, but yeah. David can come fairly soon. Okay. Okay, let me just tell it back. think we have any the RPCs weighing in on this at, at the moment but I'd love to during the break maybe I'll give them a ring and find out you know what are they talking about if it's one because you know, we have 150 is, is there anybody from the administration here interesting yeah at 10 15 so maybe I'll call Peter right now I'll call this one we have three minutes well let's okay. anyway that's a, that was a flag Chris, during town Chris Cochran had some suggested changes that he emailed me. I was unable to open them until I very good last night. They're very small, but... Um, but I, I just flagged that as a, as a concern. Well, and, the, and I think 
think that's one-time money, if I'm correct. Right. It's in there, and so they would have to come back the following year if they wanted to continue for a comparable amount of money. I don't think that money is supposed to extend over the future indefinitely. Yeah, uh, but their point is that this will take several years to actually roll out fully. I mean, it, anyway, it's it's uh, it was flagged as a concern. You have to be careful of how much we spend. I got it. And, I got it. I, We're spending a lot. I don't dis disagree with you, but if the administration has, if it's an if, if they have highlighted this as one-time money, then we'll hear from Chris. If they expect that to last for three years, I don't think yeah. you're right. If they're saying what time we'll see where we are and we may come back for another one, right. uh, then, because you're right, I don't think all the communities will get this done. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, anyway, that was the, my one on this bill. Other than everybody delighted that we're doing this bill, that was the one piece of feedback. You can have a seat. Welcome. We, we made faster progress than we thought on the other bills, so we're ready for you. And we started talking about um, a comma in the summit. I think Great. we finally understand what 1920 is trying to do. Uh, but maybe it's more. Well, could I? Uh, so the. We're trying to delete the comment after water supply and sewage disposal? Yep. I'll take out the Office of Legislative Council, yes. Uh, because uh, the intent is to make sure that uh, the municipal plans include water supply, lines, facilities, and service areas, okay. and sewage disposal lines, facilities, and service areas. Well, I can't believe it took me two months. <laughs> Just requiring more details on the map. Right. It was because the striking out right. of the comma. It looked like the comma was still in there. So, okay. So we're going to try in the next hour to walk through this whole bill and see what questions we have remaining with the hope of voting it tomorrow. Okay. Okay. So uh, I'm going to send it. Eleven. Yes. Okay. So that's why yep. you're here now. Okay. Uh, maybe we'll come after you. Um, okay, so the section we're in now is the municipal plan and section 4412 on page 2 yep. is... This is when we start talking about municipal bylaws. Right. Yep. Okay. This is the housing of... So these are the types of bylaws that are required. Um, so you're adding new language to this section. A variety of things are in this section. So. Right. Plus we're also changing the accessory dwelling unit. Thing. So we're striking that and we're just going to capture the whole following section. Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, so yeah, on page two, so the previous, are you in subsection 10 on page two? Yeah. Are you so. just to make sure we're the same address 6.1? Yes. Okay, good. Yep. So, what we're doing here is we're expanding. So currently, the municipal plan is required to reference the permitted accessory dwelling units. So now we're expanding it so that they have to uh, comply with all of the sections of uh, all of the sections in 4412, um, which includes all of the sort of density requirements and affordable housing um, bylaws that you're adding in the next section. Let's keep going. All right. Um, yeah. Okay, we talked about that before. Yeah. Yep. Can you tell us what the changes are now in Yep, so the, now we're in the definition of accessory dwelling unit. And so we had the conversation about if there should be a cap on the size of the accessory dwelling unit. And so uh, down on line 19, uh, it now reads, the unit shall not exceed 30% of the total habitable floor space, uh, floor area of a single family dwelling unit or 900 square feet, whichever is greater. So that was uh, uh, we, what we talked about shortly before town meeting week and how to capture that um, size issue. Good.
about on line 11, about the concept of running with the land. And I'm a little, I continue to be a little concerned that uh, there could be uh, deed restrictions or covenants that don't run with the land that have a negative effect on density. It could be like a, a transfer of deed saying as long as you're there, this thing prohibits you from doing, uh, you, you can't put an accessory dwelling unit there. So it wouldn't run with the land, transfer like it just be, it just be connected to one possible sale. So I'm just wondering why we need or should should have running with the land in there as opposed to deleting that phrase. I I don't know. Okay. Um, so, yeah. so this was something that was headed given over to you by the agency? They'll have to yes. okay. Okay, we'll ask them. Was did the bankers raise some questions regarding uh, subsection four as it was written before? Regarding the deed comments and restrictions, I think it may have been in more the context of this one, but it could could equally apply to yeah, the other. I just want to. You, you I, I, I don't. Yeah, well, we can hear from them. Uh, I think any concern they may have would be uh, taken up by line six and seven. Presumably, because yeah, because yeah, she's only would. perspective, uh, and it, it doesn't make sense, quite frankly, either. In my mind. Uh, some of this language is um, is almost um, how should I put it unnecessary because if you pass a bylaw and you start putting covenants in your deeds that are contrary to the bylaw, they're in some ways illegal. But this simply says that it can't be enforced. Um, but so I think it's in some ways both of these sections are held and suspended. But as long as it's perspective only. Uh, then I don't think you're dealing with taking the property and the rights. Uh, but certainly we can hear from, if we don't get to them today, we can have hallway conversations before tomorrow yeah. on that. They have some alternative language. Uh, and we'll hear from the agency on this part of the land. Ellen, would you be kind enough to just point me, the, the conserved land concern I had, uh, that's, a, I'm finding this sort of dense to read and get any. Okay, so it's on 17 and 18. I see it. Yeah, so thanks. I found it myself. All right. And the following one protects the house. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Got it. And then we go under the Act 250 exemption. Yeah, the. Um, do you want to move on to the, yeah. the next change is until page 15. Um, and this was again, uh, okay. we talked about the language in this subdivision being a little bit confusing. So I just rewrote it. So hopefully it's a little more clear. This is at the bottom. Yep. Right. So my, I, when we talked about this, yeah. I think I shared some concerns that with the language of A through E above, this is a situation whether the uh, an existing permit has conditions on the 1950 permit. Is that right, 1950 yes. permit? And whether those conditions would carry forward to the municipal permit that might substitute for the 1950 yes. permit. And it says you can't get rid of any of those conditions unless they fall into one of these criteria. Yes. And you raised the concern on C. Yeah. That may be too broad. Someone could say, well, this law doesn't apply, so we'll get rid of the condition. Meanwhile, some neighbors may have fought really hard for this or something like that. And now the condition is gone. Is is this for, does that help in terms of giving people the right to complain about that? Or? Um, no. So I did not rewrite any of the substance of this, uh, but the the language in four is about providing notice and an opportunity for hearing a hearing. So 
This is making sure that there is notice given to the, uh, the statutory parties under the Act 250 pr process. Right. And so um, if someone does want to raise an objection, there is a process by which people will receive notice and there will be a hearing on this um, change of permit. So uh, on the overall switch over to the, to the municipal permit? Yes. Um, yeah. Will the will the Act 250 permit be part of the record so they can see what the conditions have been? Yes. Okay. Um, the the permit itself will be gone, but the new municipal permit will be added to the the land records, and so hopefully those two things should be tied together at least in some way. And man, yeah. uh, and how will this be affected by the changes the house is making? Well, they'll get reconciled during the course of. This process. What? Well, the House is making some changes to uh, some of these reviews, or have right. they just backed away from all of them? Well, it doesn't matter. Not the House. I know. Well, <laughs> I'm just curious. So, about what's so yes. So the language in this section is in the House Act 250 bill. Um, so it's parallel. It is parallel. Right. The language of this section has not changed in the House bill. However, the House bill did expand the exemption to village centers as well as downtowns and neighborhood development areas, which is what your You're, bill has right. downtowns and neighborhood development areas. There's expanded it to include village centers as well. That's good. Okay. Um, is there, just to play devil's advocate here, is there a reason why this section to, uh, to limit the removal of conditions is preferable to say all the conditions apply and if somebody wants to get rid of a condition, they should go through a municipal <coughs> process like they would in Act 50 if they wanted to change the condition. Um, this was the original proposal. I think okay. you could do it other ways, but this was the original proposal. Okay. Because right. I'm still looking at C. And, say, and thinking that a federal or state law is no longer in effect, then how does a hearing help? Well, there could be a, a challenge. So, you know, the town could say this law was governing this condition, and we think this law doesn't apply anymore, so we can get rid of the condition of the permit. Well, then. And, and, and somebody could disagree with that and say there's other laws that are still impacted. Okay. So I mean, we're just we're changing conditions. We're trying to give the towns more responsibility, mm -hmm. but we want to be careful not to change the conditions of the permit unilaterally. You know, kind of changing. Well, if that were, if we could have a free fall, a free fall, where the towns could change the conditions of the Act 250 permit, we'd never get this to. Well, yeah, correct. And so here it's saying you can't do it, but in these conditions, these cases, you can. And uh, you know, it could be they could maybe make a mistake, or it could be done. They could overextend themselves in terms of removing conditions. The town could do that. And we don't want to. And, and I see I, that. And I, I think this is a section that Chris could possibly look at to not even go to Chris. Okay. Let's go on. Okay. Sorry. I know. Forgive me, but um, I somehow had thought, and I clearly was, uh, that we had included village centers. I thought we'd included all downtown and village, de designated downtown and village centers. We didn't include village centers in here. Do, and, and would we like to? I'd and, like to get this bill out of here. I, I know, but. Taking more testimony. But do, would we have, have to take more, more testimony on that? I don't know. Okay, I'm just putting it out there. It strikes me as we'll let the house do that. Okay, fine. I just think I, I had to. I thought we had. Okay, this I remember on, on line 18. This deals with giving um, the communities more time to bring their housing, uh, priority housing, preserving their priority housing. Sure. So on page 18 is the next change, and I need. So when last we spoke, uh, because we're changing the 
Because we're removing downtowns and neighborhood development areas from Act 250, that does change priority housing and the definition of it. And so there was concern about how do we preserve the incentive for priority housing. So we added to both the designated downtown and the neighborhood development area a requirement that towns have um, one of the following things to promote affordable housing. And so on page 17, and then later in the neighborhood development area, there's new language that came from the affordable housing uh, group. And so uh, we discussed that perhaps we need to push out the deadline slightly because uh, the, the way that the designations are reviewed is um, every four or eight years. And so we needed, if, the, if these changes went into effect immediately, um, there's a few towns that will be up for um, renewal or review very soon and would it maybe um, have time to comply and there was a risk that they would become out of compliance and then lose their designation. So um, on page 18 and then later, we add language hopefully trying to avoid that by saying beginning on July 1, 2022, any community under review or seeking renewal for their designation status shall comply with subdivisions B4 and B5, which are the new affordable housing requirements. Okay. So slightly pushing out that new deadline. Uh, Denise, is this posted online at this point? Uh, yes. So now we're in the requirements for a neighborhood development area. And uh, so this was the, um, some of the language from VNRC surrounding uh, flood hazard areas in a neighborhood development area. So um, this was the proposed language change from VNRC, so it now reads, the proposed neighborhood development area consists of those portions of the neighborhood planning area that are appropriate for new and infill housing, including only areas containing pre-existing development and areas suitable for infill development as defined in section 29.201 of the Vermont Flood Hazard Area and River Corridor Rule. What does that mean? So infill, uh, infill development is defined in the rule, and so this is just having the, it's just attempting to have the definition match that. So, I know we had questions about rules and statute, but um, is, is it meant to say that there's only two places? Well, you know, you use the word including, but then you use the word only. So, um, so it says it, the, the area consists of those neighborhood a neighborhood planning area that is appropriate for new infill housing. And then you're trying to say what that is. Yes. And it's only those that have pre existing development or areas suitable for infill development. So we're letting the rule and pre existing development control. Okay. Is that, those are the only two areas? I mean, it wouldn't it be more appropriate to, to do it in a, in a negative, say, say, say areas? Right, so this is sort of the result of back and forth negotiating, right? So, previous, so currently the language reads, excluding identified flood hazard areas. Um, and so this is an attempt to allow some more development in the flood hazard area, but only where there's pre-existing development and it's suitable for infill. Okay, I don't remember all the details here, but um, if you look at the language you're striking here, yeah. uh, couldn't you have that rule just come after excluding identified flood hazard erosion areas as defined? Wouldn't that accomplish the same thing? No. 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 So it is, so it's attempting to capture that it's different in all areas, um, that some towns have 
development already in the flood hazard area. Um, okay. So this is a t an attempt to allow some development in there because previously they were excluded from including it in the neighborhood development area. Okay. What would be the result if it were only out? Yeah, it seems yeah. odd to it's confusing. Have that there. I think the yeah, I do think the language could be changed. Why can't you just know, say including areas containing it's So uh, uh, forgive me, I'm sort of slow to boot up here, but are we are we giving permission then to continue to develop in flood hazard areas? Uh, I guess I'm yes. puzzled by this. Yeah, that's yes. my, my concern. Yeah. So why would we do that? Because it was proposed. Yeah, but it's a bad idea. <laughs> well, for example, if, if you look at that mobile home park that we've been talking about in Brattleboro, right. if I were reading this, that would, is this telling me that it would be okay to include that in a neighborhood development area and that you could develop it? Uh, I don't, I don't know specifically I, I, about I, I, that. I don't but. think so. I, I mean, I know. Well, but excluded. Yeah. I think the, uh, yeah. I, this is language that was proposed by people who would, I, I assume would want to protect these flood hazard areas from development. Uh, or, or, I think, I think having all, all of us having lived through a I think we want to get is much out of flood hazard areas. I think we want to understand what this says, because I don't so understand what this says. Chris is going to explain it. Clearly, we've mixed something somewhere. Chris. Man, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Real, real uh, quickly, and I want to just preface that one of the things I say consistently when we talk about this flood stuff is that this is one area that I really want the natural resources yeah. committee to look at. And they will. Yeah. So, I'm at home. So the neighborhood development area rules or statute was passed immediately after Irene. It was passed before ANR created their river corridor rules and procedures. ANR river corridor rules and procedures allow appropriate infill, like in parking lots and things that are areas right. that are already developed, that are already armored, that are not of high risk. What this change does is bring the neighborhood development area designation into compliance with current best practices at ANR per their river corridor rule. Which is what Kate spoke to us right. about. And, and we worked with the NRC on this. Obviously, they, they do not want to see buildings built in the wrong locations either, so we came to agreement. And that's the intent that two different state policies were communicating. So you're trying messages. to sync them up. Exactly. I get the sync up. Mm -hmm. Is there any way that with the word appropriate development would be? added I mean because I get the part I, I understand there is appropriate development yeah. in uh, flood hazard areas but that doesn't say that here yeah. I, I don't have any strong feelings other appropriate okay there or not. so maybe I, I, I'm well, sorry I would I say it catch this out. sooner it would work out carefully with the NRC and they're not here to comment I know they're not but she has an exciting beautiful little baby she does. <laughs> which was lovely it was so great well, she sent us the natural resources could you flag this section that we think it might need some clarification ourselves like, and we'll work over their ideas and clarify. But I think we know the intent. No, I think we also, just for our own purposes, ought to know what's section 29-201 of the Mont Flood Hazard Area and River Corridor Rule is. Can you bring us that rule for tomorrow morning? Sure, I mean, that's the definition section of the rule, so it's just having it match the definition of infill development. Right, and I think Kate d discussed that with us, as I'm recalling, but I think just the simple word appropriate in field development or what, you know, whatever would help us feel more but it says appropriate above on line seven. Yeah. But if you can get us that oh, it does. language, maybe we'll stick the language in here as opposed to cross referencing the rule. Myself, actually. But, yeah. um, okay. It reads in field development means for the purposes of designated centers, construction, installment, modification, renovation or rehabilitation of land, interests in land, buildings, structures, facilities, or other improvements in an area that was not previously developed, but is surrounded by existing development. For purposes of farm production areas, infill development means construction on a vacant area within the farm production area. That this is pre-existing development and area suitable. So pre-existing development alone, and again, I go back to that question of the mobile home park in Brattleboro. 
does that say, does this say that you could treat that as a pre-existing development area and build there? It's not in the designation. No. Well, I mean, if it were, yeah. if it were, would, it, would that would, would, would that qualify for being rebuilt when we know it's going to flood? And in fact, we're moving stuff out no, of it. I don't. I don't know enough about the facts to actually comment. So I don't. I, I, I think this is. We should flag this and have the Natural Resources Committee yeah. weigh in on it. Let's yeah. delegate it. Well, I don't know. We should be passing things we don't understand. Well, we, we haven't until 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 tomorrow. We haven't passed it. it. <laughs> we haven't passed it. They're going to make their changes and. and no, we are going to pass it. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. I thought you were going to. No, we're going to pass it tomorrow. We're going to vote on it tomorrow, and then they have to make us what we want to do. Got to discuss well, it. Well, and I hope that tomorrow we'll understand what this says, because well, I don't want to vote on something that I don't understand. Okay. And it's unclear. Okay. We will try and find that out. Okay. Uh, let's keep going. On page 21, there's a change. We're still in the same section. Um, it previously, it referenced uh, within an existing settlement, so it uh, just changes it so that it's confined to within a neighborhood development area. And then the next change is on page 26, and it's um, the same language I referenced a few minutes ago about the delaying the implementation of the affordable housing requirement for the neighborhood development area, pushing it out to July 1, 2022. However, right. Is that three years? That seems like two years after. I mean, didn't the want the It's not the same. Yeah, so this, okay. so this change is going to pretty much affect a pretty narrow group of towns, a known group of towns, because their renewals are coming up within that period. Um, so the next change is on page 31. We updated the uh, the, amount. the amount for the tax credits. Right. Okay. And Alter. So we just uh, voted on the transient. Okay, so that's going to come out. Um, I think those are all yours. Do you have any more sections? Nope. Okay, could you stick around for the next 15 minutes? I'd like Chris to. Sure. Coming to the chair to go on this environmental stuff here, after 50 minutes of permit stuff, walk through uh, section 6 1 in terms of any concerns, additions that you might have. Good morning. I'm um, just talking to the Department of Housing and Community Development. Um, you were right. I had nothing to worry about. You were going to pass this bill and get it done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we are. Yes. Um, you know, the more we live with it, the more questions we have. Yeah. Um, if I that's dangerous. I think we're supposed to be in natural resources in like 15 minutes. Yeah. 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 So I just wanted to just flag a few things, right. and then if we can get to some of the specific questions. Um, yeah. um, one thing that we missed um, when we um, recommended adding um, um, we talked about the flood mitigation credits. Um, there's a reference in the tax credit section that talks about just limiting the benefit to um, in the flood hazard area. That should also be include river corridors um, to be consistent with the change in the main and the other section. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, I mean, it's going to need more, more pages. Well, yeah, I can get you the specific but um, Okay, so it sounds like it's a technical. It's a technical change. That's, a that's technical important okay, to qualify projects. Right. Your, it, the whole background on it is FEMA's flood hazard irregular. Their their maps are not published online consistently. Okay. The right for is a statewide digital layer. And right? it's so we can make people look at the map and figure out if they qualify okay. or not. So work with Ellen to get that kind of extra. Um, the short-term rental housing report. Right. Um, 
we, as you know, we collected a lot of data. Our housing needs assessment will be coming out pretty soon. I think it's going to answer some of the questions you have there. Um, my preference, given limited time and resources the state has, was to actually give communities some tools and resources to help them manage short-term rental issues if it is a problem in their community. I'd much rather see language that directs the department to provide the department and the regional planning commissions guidance to help That's municipalities. Right. Find where we are in um, draft with our short term. Toward the very end, yeah. it's the short term rental group. Okay, so we haven't gotten to that yet. I have some concerns with your position on that, but I want you to focus on the, the sections that Alan has talked about. Okay. Um, that really, the tax credits is the only change that I have um, that, I, that we missed. Other changes I can move even this morning, if that makes sense. Thank you for your support, and I think okay. we're in a good place with them. Josh will have additional comments for the later sections, as will I. Um, a question regarding Senator Brock, your question about what infill would we require, I can't answer that. I just, um, if there's two buildings, a building here and a building here, and it's on a river, um, what ANR's river corridor procedure allows you to do is put another building within the setback of that area. It has to be raised to um, above, the above the flood plain elevation. So if it does get wet, people won't be harmed. But it does allow infill, because an infill in that situation isn't going to make flooding any worse in that community downstream. Um, so that's the intent. And we haven't looked at what it would have this would play out in a mobile home park specifically. Well, but that's the issue because infill is it's or infill right. existing. Uh, is is as written, right? And so would it would would it allow for all intents and purposes the rehabilitation of an existing building in the floodplain would allow it to be sort of rebuilt, right. as opposed to filled in? It, it would allow it to be rebuilt, um, and our presumption is that um, we're providing these tax credits to them, so when they make these improvements, they will make the building more flood safe. Um, is there a requirement that they make it more flood safe? No, we don't. Um, well, it may be required in the community that gets to a complicated Well, I guess but the question is, are we tax subsidizing something that's going to wash away in the next flood? That's my concern. We hope not. Um, we are, that we know about. Our, our, yeah. Yeah. our communities aren't really going to be moving anytime soon. We've got huge infrastructure investments in them. Um, I think the strategic way for Vermont to respond to a changing climate is to make these incremental changes to make their communities safer. Um, communities do make these changes. Often when buildings are built, they have to meet newer requirements, what we're saying. But there's an exemptions for many existing buildings because they're historic and they're almost on the National Register. So how do we get that you know, slice of buildings improved? And that's the intent of these incentives. Right. I understand. OK. Um, I did have one question on uh, this is for Ellen as well. Um, I don't know if this is your section or whatever, but the, on page four where it says nothing in the section shall be construed to prohibit uh, a bylaw that regulates short term rentals distinctly from other residential units. And then later on in the bill, we talk about that you can't pass a bylaw that uh, would, for short-term rentals that would uh, wind up encouraging the displacement of, uh, of long-term permanent housing. And I was just wondering if those two sections are inconsistent. And, and why? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, do we need this here? You may not need it here. Um, you may not. This is specifically the ADU section um, to enable the regulation. Um, oh, this section is not the ADU section. Well, on page four, um, line 10. It is, it the is accessory to Allen. It is the ADU section. It is the ADU section. Right. Um, you subsequently added a, a more global change to the chapter that says municipalities may regulate right. short term rentals. So okay. it doesn't hurt for them to be in both places, yeah. but. Um, Can we take a look, Ellen, at maybe striking line 10? That would be striking all of the little sub two. So, uh, okay, so you had written, I thought I saw it here. Mm -hmm. I, was, oh, I wanted to ask you a question that was raised earlier this morning. Um, 
on running with the land, apparently that's your language. Yeah, um, and what page are we on again? Page nine. Yeah, this came up in Ellen's. I'm afraid I don't have a great answer to that. Um, I presume it's just running with the title and in, in the land records, but I did not draft it. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know how to Who did draft it? Our attorney. Um, okay, could you get talk to your attorney? We don't. She's left us. We don't have an attorney right now, so I can't. So I think we're going to have to rely on your attorney. Okay. A vacancy? Yes. We've, had, we've been in without an attorney for several months now. Um, it's been fun. Wow, the things you could do, the places you could go. <laughs> We've relied on the kindness of strangers in many cases. Oh, it's a good thing you're in a session. I, I, I think that needs to go for the reasons I said. Yeah. I mean, you could have somebody you can sell to a party. They could live there for 50 years. Right. And, and there could be any Yeah. It's just with the bylaws. Um, okay. You, you may want to talk to you know, a lawyer. Okay. Okay. They would have actually good information on that. I, it's just not something I can answer. To. Okay, well, we do have a few more minutes before you have to go, so we'll take advantage of that. And uh, I know, is uh, David here? No. He's been sitting the same thing now. He's been checking it out the one that's so, we're going to move on to So, we're in that order. Okay, so you had some, so we're about to embark on the, you know, cut you off, and we're going to deal with the environmental sure. first. Okay, the, the, the study on... So, we're past tax, but we're, uh, we're kind of just, we're getting rid of the statewide housing state of mind. Page. With a sh the short term study on page 36 and 37, I think is where we are. Short term rentals, bottom of page 36, top of page 37. Yep. Okay. And I understand, you know, I understand the concern and the, the, the need for data on this. Uh, I, we thought we, we thought you were close to finishing. We have we, have, we have to work with many partners, AHS and others, before we can release our housing needs assessment. There is some information on short-term rentals. Right. Um, we also did the tourism office did a big study with Inatopia that scraped a lot of the short-term rental data. We have a big pile of data, but the analysis for it is not something we can do quickly. Right. So we do have information, so I don't think any emergency rules are needed to, for us to gather data. We have it. The challenge with the short-term rental data, from my opinion, is we don't know what the baseline is. We don't, we don't have, we don't know the universe of rental properties out there. And it's a very fluid market. So without an ability to compare it to like what exists, it's hard for us to report on what's happening in the state of things. We can say this is a snapshot in time. We can you know, give you some you know, general ideas about where this is happening, which we have testified, but we, you know, we, we do know where it is happening to a greater degree. Um, we do know many communities are concerned about it, and that's where I got to my recommendation. Let's do something to help them now. Let's not study this for a year. Let's give them, you know, you've enabled their ability across the board to regulate short-term rentals. What they need is sample bylaws and ordinance and support and guidance on how to implement them. The communities that are feeling these pressures are aware of it, but they could use some tools to help them get further along. And they, they don't, not every community has those resources. Well, I'm, I'm not certain that we need the, the idea of emergency rules that to allow you to collect data was to help you in right making recommendations and assessing the situation. We have a very fluid market with short-term rentals that everybody across the country is experiencing. And we didn't feel comfortable that we could start coming up with any kind of statewide policies. Maybe there is no need for statewide policies, but other but communities and other states are starting to get into this and set baseline criteria to protect long-term housing and also promote tourism and all this stuff. So and health could, and safety. We need either a report or we need a study. Whether you and we need some recommendations. Whether you need any information to collect on this stuff. 
further. That could be your decision. You know, maybe we can make this permissive, but it would seem to me if you want to write a quality report, there's going to be information you're going to want to collect. And you might not have the authority right now to collect this information. So that's why we wrote it in a way of saying, you want to, we want to get the information necessary to make sound policies uh, while balancing the privacy interests of the people who are in this industry. Uh, but we need the information. Maybe when this report comes, we've been told several times that the report was coming, I haven't seen it yet, but maybe you'll see it and say, okay, we don't need any more information. We're ready to make some recommendations. We're going to look at the literature, we'll look at all the other states, and you may come back and say, well, do nothing, legislature. Let the towns have do whatever they want. I hope that's not what you come back with. Yeah. Because right. I think this was meant to be empowering, but if you right. also want to add uh, line, I think part of your report would be we would be, we as a result, we are developing Blueprints for, right. for, but you know, for. That's my point. I don't need legislation to do this. Yeah, I you think, don't. But what I'd rather do is spend my time helping the communities with the issues, giving them the tools they need. You very well, may need legislation to get information from people who are doing short term right. mm -hmm. I don't know how much we can compel a private company to share. That's uh, a question for. Well, we want to empower you as fully as we can. Sure. Well, I think this, the point this is. committee has done. A fair amount already on short term rentals requiring some inspections, requiring tax collections. So don't say that you can't, you I can't just don't control this industry because it's a public public interest issue. I'm not saying I can't control. I just don't know what the extent of our is. Um, so that's one of the reasons why we're giving you this problem. So hopefully this report will begin to set some of the baseline. For, and, and, but um, if you want, if you think we would, if you'd like to have an additional section saying ACCD, the Department of Housing and Community Development, will uh, uh, be a resource for yeah. towns I, and municipalities going forward as they develop these ordinances and this work. Well, we don't want to change the shout to pay. If they don't want the authority, but well, we're going to make them do this report regardless. So right here on the report, um, I don't need language to help communities. We're going to help them anyway. I know, but I, I realize, but I mean, it, it, in your initial comments, it, it sounded like you were interested in um, having that be explicit or that you were available as a resource for that's communities. Gonna, that's going to require more resources. Yeah. We've $50,000, we have $350,000 out there to help other people develop the bylaws. You know, you start adding more responsibility, the more staff or right. Uh, and we don't have so we have data. We can issue you a report. And it's okay. not worth arguing about. No. Okay. Uh, so you've got to go. Yes. I want to let you go. And we're going to move on to the other.